Welcome everyone to another Microsoft Dynamics CRM training session. My name is Angelina Jacobs and I'm a consultant for CRM Dynamics located in Mississauga, Ontario. Feel free to take down my contact information in case you have any further questions or feedback you want to provide. You can send me a direct message. So today we're going to look at business process flows. What they are, why they should be used, and then how to create and configure them, as well as limitations to be aware of. Now, I'll be showing in a CRM 2015 environment, so depending on the version you have, it may look slightly different. So, what are business process flows? And what do they do? Well, they provide a great guide for users to get their work done, as it leads them through the processes defined by their organization. So one of the main points in using business process flows is to outline the set of steps needed to reach a desired outcome. This can help reduce the need for training because new users don't have to focus on which entities they need to be in and make sure they've collected all the necessary data and information or that they've done the right tasks because this process guides them through it. These processes can support common sales methodologies as well as customer service. So new staff can be brought up to speed a lot quicker, uh, which can then avoid mistakes that could possibly result in dissatisfied clients. So let's dive into business process flows. Now, depending on your security role, you may or may not have access to some of these customizations. So if there are areas you can't see, be sure to contact your IT administration first to check what access you do have. So there are two ways to get into the customizations and configurations uh, to start your business process flow design. One of them is the back end into your settings here. You'll see I went into settings and then within settings, you can go into the customizations and this is where a lot of the configurations can be done to your system um, if you are a system customizer. You'll see here that this is where it lists a bunch of the areas where you can configure uh, your entities up here. So a big list of that where you make your form and field configurations and design. But if you scroll to the bottom, there are some other options here. One of them being processes. So if I click this open, I can see the list of all the processes that have been created in the system. And you can also edit them this way. Now, another easier way to get into it is within your settings, there actually is a processes entity you can select. So I've scrolled here and I've selected processes. Now, usually the default view here is my processes. So that's anything that I've created and that I own. However, if I do click this drop down, it'll list all the views that I can uh, select, quite similar to any other entity. So I can see all activated processes. I can see the list here. Um, I can see all of them, so this includes activated as well as any draft ones. Or again, I can just see all the ones available to me. So today we're going to create a brand new business process flow. So I can just create new. I can give it a process name. So for this example, we'll pretend we're in the car industry and we're trying to create a car sales process. So I'm just going to call this car sales process. You then have to select what type of process it is. So you have options like action, business process flow, dialogue, or workflow. Today we're focusing on the business process flow. You then select the main entity it starts in. So I'm going to go with leads first. I am creating a new blank process and I just press OK. So another screen pops up. You'll see here it says business process flow and it's got the name that I inputted. So the first stage, I just want to have a qualifying stage to make sure that any leads are actually qualified or disqualified. So I'm going to name this stage qualify. You'll see here in the entity section, it already has lead inputted into there. And then over here is where I can add my steps. So I can either name my step first or if I select the field. So let's say they want to, I want to know about their purchase time frame. You'll see that once I select the field, it automatically names the step name accordingly, but I can change this. And this is what will show up as the label on the form that the users will see. 
So I've got purchase time frame. I'm going to add in um, their car preference. So this will let us select whether they're interested in either a new car or perhaps a pre-owned vehicle. So again, I can say car preference. Over here, you'll see required. Now this is whether I want these fields to be required to be filled in before the user can move to the next stage. So I don't necessarily have to have this filled in, but I probably do want to know if they're looking for a new or used vehicle. So I'm going to make that a required field. And again, you can just add more steps as you go here uh, by pressing the plus button right here. Now there's another added functionality here um, and it's called adding branches. What this does is it allows me to put in some conditionals uh, depending on what data is within a specific field. So I want to have two different stages depending on the car preference they select. So I'm going to say if car preference equals new, I want them to go into a different stage. So I'm going to say if car preference equals new, I'm going to insert this stage and I'm going to call it the new car sales. And instead of working in the lead entity, I'm going to actually make this an opportunity entity because we already know they're interested. So now this is an actual opportunity that we can work on. So within the upper, so it's just to show here that this is the opportunity entity that I'm working in. It's still all going to be part of the same business process flow. It will just go from one entity to the next, which is not very noticeable to the user. However, it, depending on which entity you're in, it will change the form um, to show whichever form has been configured for that specific entity. So a lead screen or form will possibly look different than the opportunity one. So as you move through the stage, it will change accordingly. So for this one, I might want to know the make and model they're looking for, um, as well as the color. So I've got fields for that. Um, I might want to know if they're going to do a trade-in. So I can also scroll through the whole list of fields available to me here. And you'll see if I go down here, I have one for trade-in. Again, you'll see that the step name equals the field I've selected, but I can change that if I want to. And then I'm going to say if they do have a trade-in, I might want to schedule uh, trade-in evaluation. So I also have a field created for that. And this is a date time field. The nice or the other nice um, area with business process flows is that because we're using fields that are in CRM or that we've um, input it ourselves, you can actually have the workflows or any automation you already have built in be triggered from these. So just because the field is in the business process flow section, it will still show up if it's on a form. So if I fill this in, it will show up wherever else I've put in this field uh, within the opportunity entity. And then any workflows that might be based off this um, will be triggered as soon as it says data in it. So an example of that is once I've filled in this scheduled date and time, I get a workflow that then triggers um, some auto an automated process that creates the activity appointment for that user, which is very nice, especially when you have the CRM Outlook client that uh, integrates Outlook and CRM, so it syncs that data together. So once I have this scheduled appointment in, it will sync, or I can have the workflow create an appointment activity with this same data, which then is synced into my Outlook calendar, so I'll actually see the date and time. Um, so it's a great way to keep your users on top of their activities. So I have this new car sales process. I now want to have another one. So I'm going to go add branch. And you'll see here that it just says L. So that means if car preference equals anything besides new, I have this other stage. So I'm going to call this the used car sales stage. Again, I'm working in, I want to be working in the opportunity entity here. So I've selected that. You'll also see a relationship 
uh, section here. You can uh, provide relationships if you'd like. However, they do have to be a one-to-many relationship. So in the used car sales, I might want to know, again, make and model, color, and then maybe in this one, though, I actually want to have the maximum vehicle age that they're looking for, as well as the maximum odometer reading, as that can be important to those shopping around for a new car, or sorry, a used car. So again, you'll see here that these are lengthy step names. I can actually just change this, so maybe it just says max, as well as this one, so the label is a bit shorter. Now after I have these branches, I'm going to add in a new one that, or a new stage that deals with quotes. So instead of adding a new branch like we did previously, once a user has gone through either the new car sales or the used car sales stage, they will then go back into the second stage, which I'm going to say is called deliver quote. So now that we have this opportunity, we've gone through all and filled in this data, I'm actually going to want to work within the quote entity. So again, this will move through the process and it will change entities as well as show the proper forms that have been configured for this entity. So in the quote, I might want to say once the quote has been um, configured, we'll just show the total amount to the customer. So I'll just say cost to customer. And this is nice because if this field shows on the quote form, once it's filled in, it will actually populate within the business process flow or you can do the other way around. I'm going to add another step here just to say if the quote was delivered or not to the customer. So that can just be a yes or no to make sure it was done. And then lastly, I might want to have um, an option to select whether we've had a verbal agreement with the customer. So I can just label this customer agreement and it can just be a yes or no. Again, I can make some of these fields required, so I definitely want to have the total cost. That's kind of the only way you can deliver a proper quote. And then from there, I can save this. If I just save it, it is now just a draft business process flow within my CRM, meaning it has not been published to all the users within the system. And on that note, you can actually configure which security roles have access to this. So you see I selected enable security roles. I can enable it for everyone, or I can actually select specific users. For this, I'm just going to enable it for everyone, so everyone has the opportunity to choose this sales process and have access to it. So once I've done that, I do have to activate the sale or the business process flows in order to publish it to our CRM. So I'm going to go activate. You'll get the message just to confirm. And now you'll see that it's changed up here. So it's now activated. So I do have the option to deactivate it. If I did want to do some work on it, I would want to deactivate it, do the revisions, and then activate it again. So I'm just going to close out of here. And now you'll see in my list of my processes, I have the one we just created, car sales process. So now we'll actually look at the business process flow that we've put in place. So if you see here, I'm in the sales lead entity. So I'm going to create a new lead. And you'll see here that there's already a built-in CRM business process flow up here, but that can be changed depending on your security role if you do have access to other ones. So see here, I can just fill in the form. So this will be a new uh, car sales. And I'll just put in a name. We got Amber. And then I can save the record. And you'll see here if I clip up, click on the ellipses or the three dots up here, I get this menu. And you'll see there's an option to switch process. 
So if I click that, it'll give me all the activated business process flows available to me within this entity. And you'll see here's the new business process flow we created for car sales. So I'm gonna select that, I'll select, and you'll see that it will change the business process flow that's up here at the top. So the form itself, the lead form that is configured stays the same, but the process that I have to go through here in terms of the stages available to me has changed because I've selected a different business process flow to go through. So you'll see here, I do have these fields I added in, purchase time frame, car preference. So I'm gonna select new, they're looking for a new one. Once I've done that, I will go, I'll save the record. And because I'm in the built-in lead stage, or sorry, the lead entity, I can qualify this lead knowing that they are interested in getting a new car. And you'll see that it moves to the next stage, which is then actually in the opportunities entity. And it's gone to this new car sales that we added in as a branch based off what we selected in this stage here in terms of car preference. So I've qualified that lead. And now you'll see I'm in the opportunities entity. I'm in this new car sales stage. And then I have all these available to me to select. So I can say color, they might want a black, and we'll make that a Honda, Honda CRV. And you know, maybe we haven't scheduled anything um, for a trade in because they're not actually going to trade anything in. So I'm going to go to the next stage. And then we're gonna create a quote for them. And you'll see here that I've now moved from the qualify stage, the new car sales stage, and I'm into the deliver quote sales, or the deliver quote stage that we created. And you'll see here that I've got those fields I added in. And then you've got your quote screen down here where you can make the necessary changes. You can add in uh, products or quotes, so I can add in the amount um, that's being quoted for the car. It will show up here or it will show up down here, depending on how you have your system configured. And that's how you get a business process flow in place. Now that we've completed our business process flows, there are a few limitations to be aware of. One is that there can be no more than 10 activated business process flow processes per entity. So this just means if I was in the lead entity, I could have no more than 10 active uh, processes available. Users can switch between uh, the different processes though, depending on the role, as we showed. Um, you just go into the three dots or the ellipses in the top where you can then switch the process that's being used on that record. Another limitation is that each process can only uh, contain up to 30 stages. So the one we did only had a few stages. I've only ever seen some with, I think, a maximum of 10. But just to keep in mind, if it is something that has many stages, there can be no more than 30. Also, for any multi-entity processes, they can only contain up to five entities. And that's similar to the business process flow we created here, we use three different entities. So we were using lead, opportunity, and quote. So just keep in mind if it is um, a process that flows across multiple entities that it cannot um, be more than five. I want to thank you all for attending and hope you enjoyed this webinar. We do have another one coming up next month that will cover workflows as it is a more technical area of CRM, but it is very beneficial into improving the capabilities of CRM and automating a lot of the processes that might be in place.